Hi there, I'm Mike, and what I have for you today is June's Zanini box. Yes, it's July, and I've actually had this for a while. Uh, it was shipped out like at the beginning of June, and I just not have not had the time to really sit down and do a proper unboxing. So I'm doing that now, a little late, but better late than never, I think. But I do want to give a sincere apology to Mr. Zanini. He does send these to me for free. The opinions are always my own, but I do feel like uh, getting them for free, I do kind of owe a little bit more expediency in exchange for, you know, free boxes. But uh, sometimes things are just, they're not in your control. So if this is your first time watching a Zanini box unboxing, welcome to my Zanini box. I love these, but they are all pins, magnets, and cards. So if pins, magnets, and cards aren't your thing, you're not gonna really like this box. Uh, but I like it because it's a bunch of properties that I just, I really like for the most part. Uh, it's fun to, um, I don't know, just kind of go through and, and see what we get this month and talk about uh, you know, the different uh, properties and, and my experiences with them. It's just kind of a fun walk down memory lane. So the way this works out is we have cards, we have pins, and then those pins are also turned into magnets. There's different price points. And if you want any of these, you can get 10% off by using my name, Mike Case, to get 10% off your first purchase, uh, if you like it. If you don't, you can, I don't know, you can stop watching, you can watch and just comment. I don't know, there's a lot of things you can do with your time. But we're gonna start off with the cards here. So you get a nice little uh, three by three, uh, you know, nine, nine grid, plastic sheet, I guess, that goes in a binder. That's what it's for. And we have nine cards we're gonna go into. The first row are all comics. So this is The Flash number two, published by DC Comics, released October 8th, 2013. Uh, art by Francis Manip Manipool, uh, written by Brian uh, Buccellato, I have Francis, man, I've got no idea, guys. The, the names are back here. I don't know who any of these people are, but that's how I know. I don't have this weird encyclopedic knowledge of flash covers. Uh, I will say on um, there's a QR code on the back here, so if you want to download any of these or you know pay for them, I guess, uh, you can buy them digitally for the most part, too. This is Hulk Future Imperfect number two, written by Marvel Comics, published by Marvel Comics. Uh, on January 1st, 1993, written by Peter David and art by George Lopez. I think that's the, uh, I think that's when the Hulk was maestro. He was, uh, he was kind of, a, he was a bad guy, I'm pretty sure. And then next we have Captain America, number two, published by Marvel Comics on April 1st, 1941. Writer Joe Simon, cover art by the legendary Jack Kirby. That was back when Captain America was fighting Hitler. The good old days. All right, next we have a classic movie. The next three are all movies and TV shows. So this is Unforgiven, directed by Clint Eastwood, distributed by Warner Brothers on August 7th, 1992, 131 minutes long. I remember this was one of those movies that got a lot of hubbub. I was, what was it, 1992? I was 10. Uh, I didn't really have a solid understanding of movies like that when I was 10, but I do remember it being a big deal. Next we have Silence of the Lambs, Directed by Jonathan is it Dem, I don't know. It was uh, distributed by Orion Pictures on February 14th, 1991. This is one of those movies, I've seen it once. I saw it, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 15 years ago. And it just, uh, it was fine. It wasn't bad. I just, uh, it's another one of those movies that's always been in the zeitgeist of my life. Like, I, it's, it's there, it's been a thing, I know it but it's never been a thing I've been super into, but a lot of things came from it. So, you know, you gotta respect it. And then next we have season three of Breaking Bad. Love it. 13 episodes released in 2010 by AMC. This this was peak Breaking Bad right there. I loved Breaking Bad, especially season three and four. And then the last row are all video games. So next we're doing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This was developed by Ubisoft Montreal, and it was released on November 10th, 2020. I have not played any Assassin's Creed games since like three or four. It's, it's been a while since I've played Assassin's Creed. Uh, next, we have Streets of Rage 4 by Dotemu. 
It was released on April 30th, 2020. I actually didn't even know this game existed. I love Streets of Rage back in the day. I might have to go download that and play it. I love a good beat em up. Uh, and then last we have Star Master, released for the Atari 2600 by Activision in 1981. I love those classic, classic games. Hopefully they'll move away from Activision and we'll get like some Nintendo stuff. But I feel like maybe Activision's, um, I don't know if Nintendo would object to that uh, without paying fees or whatever. So maybe, maybe it's just easier to stick with Activision and Atari. Okay, so that is the cards. If you want those, you can just get cards. Six bucks gets you all nine of those cards. You get the little uh, binder thing. The cards themselves are like a nice thick cardboard. Uh, which is real nice. It's very high quality. But next we get pins. So if you want pins, I think it's $15 for all five of these pins. Uh, and then it's like, I think it's like $20 if you want to get the cards and the pins. Again, uh, you save 10% by using my name if you want to. I don't get any of that, by the way. I, I, I don't get anything from that. Uh, it's just something that you get for using my name. My, my thing I get is free boxes and I'm okay with that. So next we have five pins and we're gonna go through these one at a time, starting with number one. This is Ghostbusters. Now again, Ghostbusters, one of those things that's been in my life for basically the entirety of my life. I was born in 82, I think the first movie came out in 84. Then, you know, there was a sequel and then there was the cartoon and in the 90s there was the extreme Ghostbusters. Basically, Ghostbusters has been a thing since I've been alive and conscious of what things are. Uh, I love this. I love the simplicity. It's just the Ghostbusters symbol. I like that a lot. On the bottom, it says limited edition. Uh, this, is a, this is a really nice pin. I like this a lot. Next, we have Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat. Uh, again, I've always been more of a Street Fighter person than a, than a Mortal Kombat person, but I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on Mortal Kombat at all. Johnny Cage is not one of my favorite characters from it, though. Uh, I know they teased him at the end of the Mortal Kombat movie that just came out to be in the sequel. So I I, I really hope a sequel happens because that would be cool. Next, we have classic classic. Star Wars R2-D2. I love Star Wars. I think you can tell behind me, I've got a quite the Star Wars action figure collection. I've got pretty much every Black Series. I have loved Star Wars. Again, it's, I mean, it was before I was alive. So it has been a thing since, you know, since before I was even a thought. You know, I, I never watched, actually sat down and watched Star Wars until I was in like sixth grade, but up until then, it's just been in everything I've ever watched. Muppet Babies did so much Star Wars stuff. I thought I had seen the movies just because of how much Star Wars content is in Muppet Babies, you know? It's, it's things like that. It is a part of our society, no matter what country you're from, for the most part. I love Star Wars, and R2 is a fantastic character that's a necessary compon component to Star Wars. Next, we have another entry in our Looney Tunes. This is Foghorn Leghorn. One of my favorites as a kid, because I, I like the way he talked. He talked kind of funny. One they've been downplaying recently because he has the sort of sort of racist overtones of being that, you know, plantation owner, southern gentleman kind of kind of thing. But you know what? I, it's really hard to just not like Foghorn Leghorn. I say, I say, I say, you know, things like that. I, I couldn't tell you anything about the cartoons that he had, to be honest, but um, it's all a product of his time, you know? It's, it's, it, it, you gotta, if you know it in the context of what it is, I feel like you can still appreciate those things uh, while knowing that they were produced during a certain time period that people didn't uh, view those things as overly bad. Uh, and then lastly, we have Another in the entry of Masters of the Universe. This is Beast Man. One of my favorites as a kid. Uh, there was a, someone dressed up as Beast Man one night. It was a Halloween, probably. It had to have been like four or five. So that would have been like 86. It was like 85 or 86. I just remember someone dressed as, as Beast Man and it scared the bejesus out of me. I was terrified because it was a really good costume. Uh, just walking down the street, you know, um, in North Carolina, North Carolina, uh, trick or treating. And uh, he was he was a scary guy. I think I was dressed up as Sergeant Slaughter that year. I had the mask and everything. It was a lot of fun. Anyways, I love He-Man. I love Masters of the Universe. Uh, and then again, I'm not going to take these out, but all of these 
all of these you can get as a magnet. I think it's it's like five dollars more or whatever because magnets are more expensive. If you want to get them as a magnet, you can get them as a magnet, uh, and that's just kind of that's that's fun. So again, if you want to check out any of these or buy them, there's a link down the downstairs area. Uh, you can hop on there, buy whatever combination. You can get just some things or all of it or whatever. Uh, get 10% off by using my name if you haven't before. I'm gonna order these in least to most favorite. And this one's tough, because I like a lot of these. The least of all these is gonna, I'm gonna start with Johnny Cage, um, just cause, you know, he's just not my favorite Mortal Kombatter. Uh, and then in the number four spot, how should I do this? Yeah, number four spot, we've got uh, Foghorn Leghorn. Number three, whew, this is tough. We're gonna have Beast Man. Number two, oh, you know what? As a pin, I'm doing this as a pin. Number two, we've got R2-D2, and number one is going to be Ghostbusters. And this is just going as a pin, not as like a thing I like. You know what? Johnny Cage is, is my least favorite. Just based on the pins. I keep going back and forth between Johnny and Foghorn. Johnny Cage is number five. Foghorn's number four. Beastman is number three. R2 is number two. And this Ghostbusters pin is number one. And I really like this Ghostbusters pin. So that's that. Let me know down the downstairs area. What did you think of it? What Do you like these? I love to read and respond to all of those. I'd also love to know what your order is. I just out of curiosity. I'd love to take a moment and thank these people here for supporting me on Patreon at an unboxing level or higher. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me that you guys do that. If you'd love to support the channel, you can join Patreon. I also do have a YouTube membership. Uh, if none of those things are your thing, you can like, share, subscribe. All those things help out the channel a lot in their own way with that dreaded YouTube algorithm. But with that, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for getting this far and I'll see you later. Bye.